So we need to do inverse of last principle. Before we start, let's review what we have done so far. What have we what have we done? We got the mechanical system. So you got spring, you got temper, you got mass. You have multiple of those kind of things in your system. Then you define what is your moving direction. You got the acceleration, position, and velocity. Right? So we will need to use differential equation. We got equation of motion. We got dynamic response. Essentially, we call this thing transfer function. Right. Now, since we are dealing with control system, essentially, what we're going to do in the end of this class, we're going to multiply this one by the controller. Where's convolution? Just like what we did in the end. Okay, so we need to do convolution. Once we get our convolution, we need to verify whether the system fulfill our criterion in terms of time response. But this is time. This is S domain. How can we get everything from S point back to time? Inverse. Laplace transform, then we got our time information. So now we have complete equation of motion, Desi understand the time uh, dynamic response. We haven't talked about the controller, that is going to be topic seven. So it should be like maybe one month after that. But over here, we will need to know what is your inverse Laplace transform so we can convert everything from frequency back into time. So that is something we're going to do for now. So how do we do inverse of our transform? When we do inverse of our transform, we need to understand what is your transfer function. It is going to be numerator denominator. Right? And when you have something like this, you're going to find it is going to be this part over here is going to be a polynomial. got another polynomial over here, right? That is essentially what, what I asked you to do in your homework. However, when you try to come up with the inverse of our transform, you're going to find you need to decouple everything into a simplest term. So you're going to have a combination of a lot of things. Depending on the order of your denominator, you're going to have corresponding number of small part. So over here we're going to use partial fractional expansion. You guys learn this when you are taking calculus one. You should know this already. It's just if you have a lot of uh, those kind of things and you need to use a lot of uh, smaller uh, 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 fraction representation to represent this big polynomial combination. So that is something we're, we're going to do. So essentially what are we talking about? We are converting this one into a constant multiplied by
this is in your notes. Okay. So over here you're going to find out it's going to be a lot of combination of first order expansions. Over here is a lot of uh, expansions of first order combinations. The root in your denominator, we call those ones oh. The one in your denominator, we call those roots zeros. Okay? They are just the definition of terminologies. So when I say pop, it means that I'm talking about the roots in your denominator. When I'm talking about zeros, it means that it's the roots of your numerator. Is that clear? Everybody understand what I'm talking about? Just definition. So when we are doing something like this, you might want you might worry, okay, how can I know it's going to be first order expansion? Why is it not possible to be second order or higher order? Can you guarantee it's always first order? The answer is yes and no. The reason is yes. Let's say the reason is no. Because all polynomials or combination of first and second order equations. What does that mean? If you have a lot of polynomial, you're going to find out know this because this is uh, something you learn in junior high school. You need to convert polynomial into a combination of first order and second order systems. Have you ever memorized any formula which is first order with third order system? No. It must be first order, a uh, combination of first orders or combination first order and second order system equations. That's all. It means that when you have a polynomial, it doesn't matter how, much, how high the order is going to be, you always can decouple everything into multiple first order and second order systems. Does that make sense? We're going to talk about when, you, when we have uh, multiple first order and second order systems, physically, how can we decouple them? But over here, mathematically, you just need to remember all the equations over here must be first order and second order. Same for your numerator, okay? So, no, it must be first order and second order system. Yes. Because second order equation can be complex So the roots for your second order system, it doesn't need to be real number, it can be complex numbers. So that's the reason I say yes, because if it's complex numbers, essentially you can convert everything into first order combinations. Does that make sense? Okay. So if we, you have something like this, this one over here is still difficult to deal with, because if you go back to the for the uh, Laplace transform table, which is something I showed you last time, you're going to find out all the Laplace transform uh, Laplace transfer transform table. You are dealing with either it's going to be first order or second order. So when you have combination like this, it's always difficult to come up with the answer. So that's a reason we would like to have our fs to be s minus p1, c1, plus s minus p2, c2, plus p2. Something like this. If it's first order system, you always has constant above it. You guys learned this in Cal one, uh, calculus 1, right? So this is how we use partial fractional expansion to come up with 
those combinations. So when you have a combination like this, and you try to find out what's going on individually using inverse of Laplace transform with a table, this is going to be this is going to be the same thing. And you just add them together. Since we are dealing with linear systems, we can use superposition to combine all the terms all together. Is that clear? Everybody understand what I'm talking about? Okay. If you don't like to have the combination like this, let's say you prefer not to deal with complex numbers, then you probably going to have about those parts because I'm going to explain those things in the, uh, I think in the next topic. But this part over here is going to be a second order system. Then, depending on whether, how many uh, first order you're going to decouple everything, how many second order you're going to decouple into, it's going to be a combination of this one and this type. So if you can inverse Laplace, trans uh, inverse Laplace transform, for this one, then you know it's going to be exponential term. Over here is a second order. When you look into the uh, Laplace transform table, you're going to find out when you have s, it's a cosine. When you have a constant, it's a sine. So when you, when you uh, process the numbers over here a little bit, you're going to find this one is going to be the combination of sine function and cosine function, which means when you have sine function and cosine function, you start to have oscillation. If you have all, everything like this, your combination of a lot of those kind of things, because everything is first order, that is going to be something we need to use using inverse Laplace transform. Does that make sense? Is that clear? I think my time is up. So let's talk about the next things uh, Monday. Any questions before I let you guys go? Yes. Yes. Yes.